Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of personal financial literacy, balancing a check register. This is standard, 6.14c in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 10 off the 2021 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have a check register, and this is going to be for a checking account. And sometimes you might even have a checking account and a check register and not even write any checks. A lot of us use debit cards nowadays. Checks are little pieces of paper that act as money that stores will take in place of payments, like if you don't have cash. But they take a few days to deposit, so a lot of stores prefer debit cards. But debit cards pull from your checking account, just like checks do. But you always have to keep track of how much money you actually have. So we have the story here of Taquan's check register. And before he made his utility payment, this is what he had. He had a balance of $1,094.80. So anytime we're going to deposit money, we're going to add that in. Anytime we withdraw money, we're going to take it away. So we need to keep a running total of how much money Taquan actually has, because if you go into the negative, bad things happen. They start charging you fees. So let's see. We're literally just going to do a little bit of addition subtraction. But this withdrawal, well, this first one for the utility payment, is 193.66. So all we need to do is kind of keep track of whether it's going to be an, ad an add or a subtract. In this case, a withdrawal when you're making a payment is going to be taking that money away. So let me see, 80 minus 66. So if I can make this a little bit bigger here, that's going to be 14. And that's going to be 4 minus 3 is 1, 9 minus 9 is 0, and then 10 minus 1 is 9. So we paid $193.66 and he came away with $901.14. So he still got quite a bit of money, and he received a gift of $50. Maybe it's cash from Grandma. We don't really know what it is. But we are going to add this $50 back in. So what we do is we just put it right in that white line right there, and we're going to keep our gray lines for our running total. So we're just going to add that, and it's just going to be a pretty simple 9 51, everything else just transfers down, 14. And so he's got 951.14, that's his first running total was 1094.80, and then 901.14. Now he's added a little bit more money, he's got 951.14, but here comes the rent. And so he's got to take away a big portion of money. $650 even. So we're going to take that away, and that's going to leave us with, let's see, $301.14. And then finally, after we took away the utility payment, took away the rent, we get to add that paycheck back in. That's going to feel good. That's why working is so important. 842 and then we've got 75. So we're going to make that a 9. That's an 8. That's a 3, 4, and we have 11. 8 and 3 is 11. So the numbers aren't always going to be perfectly even or anything like that, but uh, you notice our total here is 1143, 89. And you notice that one little mistake with addition or subtraction can change everything. So it's really good to be uh, really good with your addition and subtraction. If you want to use a calculator, that's fine. It doesn't always hurt to double check. But there is no A, B, C, or D to choose from. So now we're going to have to bubble this in. Remember, our sixth grade answer document has got six columns. So let's just draw the top here. So we're going to have this little column right here that we're not going to do anything with. There's no bubbles underneath it. That's our decimal spot. So we have two decimals to the right of the decimal point, and then we're going to have four columns to the left. We're going to go up to the thousands place. So this will fit perfectly. 